Now, our co-hosts on the day, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap, Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Matt. Good morning. Great to be here. Great to have you. It's great. It's great for you to be grateful to have me. Your turn. Sorry. Yeah, that was bad. Sorry. <laughs> I, won't, I won't follow you down that path, <laughs> no. but I will appreciate your attempt to lead me there, though. <laughs> uh, you've got a long day ahead of you, Mr. Harvey. Yes, sir. I absolutely do. Uh, big night. I think it's a very going to be a very informative and um, uh, this community discussion at the, let me get this right, the Bird Health Sciences Center Auditorium starting at 530. It's the uh, part of the series with the Stubblefield Institute. How is West Virginia first? Putting West Virginia first. That's mm-hmm. a, I like the clever, I don't know who, John, did you come up with that? I did not. Well, it was, it was well done. Um, I'll be there. Our executive director, Jonathan Board, will be there. Your region two representative, Tim Zaya, out of Berkeley County, the day, day report uh, executive director for, yeah. and uh, Stephen Skinner, who was local counsel for Berkeley, Jefferson, and uh, a couple other, maybe Martinsburg. I'm not sure. Definitely uh, Jefferson County and Berkeley County. Mm-hmm. And Stephen Travis, who works at the. Uh, attorney general's office and i'm really excited about uh those two because they can they can kind of get behind this give everyone a behind the scenes look at the process the the past of it and that's important because that impacts the direction that the foundation must go because they're the they were integral and a big part of setting this up and drafting the documents in our mous and so they know the intention behind the the creation of the foundation and the documents very good and uh, if you'd like to participate in that event tonight, there's no charge to attend. So have yes, at it. Starting at 530. Quick public service announcement here. The Berkeley County Deputy Sheriff Civil Service Commission is now accepting applications for the position of Deputy Sheriff. The application deadline is Tuesday, November 26 at 5. If you have questions, you need to reach out to John Alderton between 8 and 5 any Monday through Friday at 304-264-1927. Extension 6019. You can also, if you'd like to apply, go to berkeleywv.org. They are hiring for sheriff deputies. We have uh, via telephone Conrad Lucas is joining us this morning, former state chair of the GOP in West Virginia, and uh, he preceded Melody Potter. And at the time uh, when that uh, transition took place, I was sad to see Conrad go because he was a great GOP chair and excellent with the media, and his successor was not so much. Good morning, Conrad. How are you, sir? Hey, good morning, guys. And thanks for having me on. I, I, I think I, Rob, you and I, we, we, we were texting. I, I was taking my little girl to uh, daycare, and don't tell her mother. But we, we missed it. We missed it. I missed the drop off, so she's with me right now. So I'll, 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 I'll take her back right now. So she's here for her first radio appearance. <laughs> oh, <so>. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but she, uh, yeah, she. I just so Matt, as long as Matt Harvey doesn't upset her too much, this will be a good, this will be a good trip. <laughs> well, that, that's awesome because I remember having you on the show. You actually were so committed to your job, you made an appearance on our show as a guest during your honeymoon. <laughs> Do you remember that? I think we're just going to yeah, uh, yeah, because that's when Jim Justice switched parties. Yeah. So, uh, so I think your listeners can confirm through my various appearances I'm a bad husband and father. But uh, I am, I'm going to work on it. <laughs> well, I appreciate your priorities. This show should come before family. I think everyone would agree on that, Conrad. <laughs> everyone uh, everyone know, named Rob Mario would yeah. agree on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, 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 yeah cuz when Justice switched parties, it was um it was I, I got I got married on July 29th and he switched parties four days later and um i we were you know on a honeymoon so uh i was i was six hours ahead and uh well i had i had to I had to had to work a little bit and i it turned out to be expensive because i i told my new bride at the time i said all right you can uh you can get a, a new leather wallet or something to, something the next day and she said done and uh, that I, I I didn't know I didn't set parameters on that. So anyway, I paid that off about a month ago, I think. So. <laughs> well, there's a price to pay for everything, Conrad. I guess, right? There is. There yeah. is. Well, yeah. I I understand that uh, this week you were named to the transition team with Attorney General Morrissey as he becomes governor 
uh, Patrick Morrissey in uh, another month or so here. How is that going to work in regards to the transition? And then yesterday somebody said to me, why does a attorney general need a transition team to governor? So maybe you could answer both of those questions. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, it, it's been a very exciting week. I mean, Patrick is really... Um, uh, taken the bull by the horns and uh, announced the uh, leadership of the transition team uh, just a couple days ago. And I was very honored to be uh, one of the first announcements on that. You know, it's been uh, – I've, I've known Patrick ever since, um, you know, he came on the scene and prior to him coming on the, uh, the political scene, I've worked closely with him um, all the years as he was uh, AG and just – uh, he's a very good friend, so I, w I was honored to be uh, tapped to be um, in this capacity. And so the way that will roll is, in the coming weeks, there'll be um, a series of announcements. Of course, uh, you know, this week was the announcement of the the leadership team. Uh, you know, next week there'll be some more um, uh, some more announcements um, that go along with that, along with you know the beginnings of some uh, inaugural details. And then you'll start to hear uh, some of the uh, key staffing. Um, uh, staffing announcements along the way, always to keep the public uh, public informed. And I think one of the most important um, components to this transition um, is the launch of the West Virginia Prosperity Group website, which we want as many people to go to as they can. It's just wvprosperity.com. That's wvprosperity.com. And that's an opportunity for everyone in West Virginia to submit ideas for the next administration um, and to submit their names and their resumes if they're interested in being part of any of the transition or actually working in the administration itself. So that is, that's very exciting. I'm unaware of that level of, uh, you know, that level of uh, involvement before because we want every West Virginian to be involved and this is an opportunity to as I mentioned give um, ideas and thoughts on any number of issues that that, that, are, that are on folks minds um, that they want to see change um, on in West Virginia and also it's complete transparency if you're interested in working for the administration you can apply everyone can apply I was uh, talking to some folks um, who were actually active in transition who may themselves be interested in working inside the administration well they're submitting resumes the same way um the same way as, as everyone else so uh, it's it's so what you'll see is just a series of a series of announcements to keep the public informed and because we want the public to be as involved as everyone else and you know to the question about why does you know an ag need um you know a, a transition uh, into governor is very different roles and very different responsibilities. You know, the, the AG's office is, is one very important component to state government, but we're looking at, you know, a lot of holistic uh, changes and approaches, and uh, that's why we need a comprehensive transition team um, and comprehensive transition process, much like every governor has since, since, since the beginning of time uh, in West Virginia and, and in other states. Our guest on the program here is Conrad Lucas. He is a member of the transition team for Governor-elect uh, Patrick Morrissey. Mr. Gilstrap. Uh, what is that website again? WVProsperity.com. Yes. W, w, WVProsperity.com. Oh. WVProsperity.com. So, you, so you, you can pull that up, and um, I, I, I hope all your listeners do, to, um, to get just a, a bit of a glimpse. And there'll be more news um, posted there over time, and just to keep everyone informed on every step of the process and uh, and what all's going on. And like I said, it's a chance for them to be to be part of the process it, itself. I mean, in the first 24 hours, we had several hundred ideas and resumes submitted uh, just with the launch, and uh, we want more and more and as many as many as possible. There's no no such thing as too many ideas or or, or too many resumes. Well, I've I've always thought that West Virginia needs a, a novelist laureate. Um, just saying, you know, if if, if, if be the, you, yeah, yeah, if um, so, yeah, I mean, that would be a, that's a novel idea. <laughs> <laughs> I heard what you did there. Yeah, <laughs> I like that, Conrad. <laughs> You're so, when it comes time for the the, the transition, is that a uh, a matter of of setting up the like the day one priorities so that. Once I guess day one 
what is day? When is day one? Is that in February? Jan- of January third, January thirteenth. <laughs> okay, yes. so on January thirteenth, it, it's a yeah the equivalent of executive orders in in the, on the at the federal level that boom, this is what we're going to do. Is that what the transition well, team is about? Be, yeah, well, it, it'll be an opportunity for so the team itself. We're hand we're helping to support a lot of Governor Elect Morrissey's uh, logistics. You know, we are. Um, there will be a lot of, um, there'll be public meetings um, around the state, because not everyone, you know, wants to log their ideas onto um, a website. They, they'd rather go chat in person, which is great. Um, so we will be part of the, some of the logistics for that and some of the logistics of um, helping to um, handle a lot of the ad- administrative type functions. And we're all volunteers, by the way. So it's, it's, um, um, it's, it's a... Um, fiscally conservative approach to transition. So uh, in terms of laying out priorities, say what would an agenda be in um, the first session of the legislature, that's where you're going to start seeing that type of information as, as um, things continue to move on. You know, one of the things that Patrick mentioned uh, at his press conference where he announced the uh, transition team and um, a little bit of uh, the process, his, uh, the process uh, he mentioned that he wants to work directly with legislative leadership um, to come up with a, a largely agreed to um, agenda and priorities um, prior to legislative session. <laughs> so you'll start hearing that and seeing that and say goals for the, you know, the, the first, uh, sometimes it's done as the first hundred days, sometimes it's done as goals for first uh, legislative session or uh, first few months. So you'll, that's where you'll see that. And that's, that's one of the purposes is so that the public um, knows, knows what we're up to. Complete, you know, complete transparency on that front. Because, you know, it, it's, like, it's like as Patrick has always approached everything, it's, the more folks are involved, then it's, it's, that makes ideas better. Um, and it makes it more reflective of what the citizens of West Virginia are wanting. And we know that they're interested in a lot of change. So, this is this is a very first step in uh, helping to scaffold that and see it into reality. Eric, first step of a lot of steps. <laughs> Eric Householder is also a part of the transition team, as I understand it. Oh yeah, he is. He, he yes, he's he's one of the co leaders of that. And you know, Eric um, is is uh, going to be invaluable to that. Of course, uh, you guys know him very well, and. I know he's been on the show, I mean, countless times, unfortunately more than I have. But he has, um, of course, Eric's been a very important uh, player in the state legislature and political process uh, and a very close friend of Patrick's for a long time. So uh, I'm excited to work with Eric uh, directly on on a lot of things in the coming weeks, months, and years. Mr. Harvey. Just before that, and thank you to our Facebook listener, Brad Close. It is WestVirginiaProsperityGroup.com. Ah, thank was, you. Uh, Wait, did Brad, was that Brad? Okay, so uh, all right, he's he's getting back at me for for being incorrect on that because I was making fun of him behind his back the other day. Well, I couldn't so, get yes, it to West come Virginia up Prosperity while we were talking, Group. so it's West Virginia Prosperity Group dot com. West right. Virginia Prosperity WV Prosperity Group dot com. Yeah, I'm sorry correct. about that, and thank you, Brad Close, for for always keeping me honest. Good job, Brad. Conrad, I want to follow up with the conversation we started not too long ago. We were talking about yeah. how Vanderbilt has owned. Uh, the state of Alabama in football this year. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, yes, thank you, thank you. That's, now we're on to important things. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Well, I wanted to know, and uh, has that ever happened before that they've beat Auburn and Alabama? 1955. 1955. So, um, he knew it right 1955. away. 1955. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I will tell you, we live in weird times. So this last Saturday when we had uh, a mistake against South Carolina and didn't win, it was the first time in American history where on the Saturday after a Republican has won uh, the nomination to be president that Vanderbilt lost. <laughs> so, there, yeah, there's a fact wow. for, you, for you. Who knew that time besides Conrad? Exactly. <laughs> hey, Conrad, so... Um, <laughs> me, me and Twitter. Me and Twitter know it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, good. Um, so we're all familiar with Eric Householder, and, and we agree with your assessment mm-hmm. of him. But tell us about the rest of the team. We're, we're less familiar with those folks. Oh, sure. So, I mean, it, it's a wonderful group with a, a background, a, lot, a varied background. So you have uh, Jim Martin, who's the CEO of uh, CityNet, which is a broadband company, and he's based out of uh, Bridge, the Bridgeport area. You have um, Jim Lorita, 
Smith, who is a longtime uh, major player in West Virginia's coal industry. He uh, had been the president of the West Virginia Coal Association a number of years uh, number of years back. He's out of Morgantown. Julie Kaminsky, who is Raleigh County Republican Executive Chair, and I've been a successful uh, uh, run uh, several um, advanced planning firms. Um, in other states and West Virginia. She uh, is in Beckley. You have Karen Evans, um, also an Eastern Panhandle lady, um, who was, I know Karen from her uh, many years of activism um, in the Republican Party and being active in uh, the Republican uh, women's group um, statewide, but she was also in the Donald Trump administration. So Karen's been a very successful um uh, partner in a, in, in a business herself and a Trump appointee. She is, you know, incredibly talented in, say, cybersecurity, um, the cybersecurity area. Um, you also have uh, Doug Buffington, who has worked directly uh, with Patrick um, in the AG's office itself and a longtime alum um, of state government in various roles. Um, and he's from Beckley uh, as well. So that is the those are the initial announcements. So myself, Eric, Eric Householder, Doug, Karen, Julie, uh, Jim Lorita, and um, Jim Martin. So those are the announcements that have been made so far. So it's you know, geographic diversity, uh, diversity in um, in uh, professional backgrounds and experience with government. Some inside, some out. So it, it, it's a it's a great group of folks uh, who all bring different perspectives and. There will be more announcements of others who are playing uh, key roles um, in the coming weeks, and that's only going to add to the, the quality of the, the composition of the, the group that we have. Do, do you and, and the others, uh, including uh, Governor-elect Morrissey, see any sort of – what kind of advantage do you see with an incoming president of Trump and his administration and uh, Patrick's administration and the makeup of the legislatures? All the advantages you can think of. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, so it's Patrick and, uh, you know, President Trump um, have, a, have a great relationship. And, you know, President Trump um, has been supportive of Patrick uh, over the years. And obviously Patrick has been supportive of him. And, you know, it, 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 you know Patrick always was at the forefront as a G um, in keeping the Biden administration in check uh, from a legal perspective. You know, there were a lot of very high-profile um, lawsuits like West Virginia v. EPA that Patrick took the lead on, which were, um, again, keeping the Biden administration in check and um, um, keeping America great uh, in, in, in many ways. And we're sea-changing in the legal front. So he's, he is... I know he's very excited to work directly with President Trump. And what you'll see a lot on the national level, you'll see, you know, a lot of deregulation. You'll see a lot of uh, focus on values. You'll see a lot of um, right-sizing of government. And you'll see that mimicked in West Virginia because Donald Trump and Patrick Morrissey are uh, very aligned in a lot of ways. So I think that West Virginians who were voting for change, you know, West Virginia, of course, all, 55 counties were supportive of Donald Trump and Patrick Morrissey. Um, I think West Virginians are going to be very happy with what they see. Um, and when it comes to the legislature itself, I mean, you know, my goodness, I think when I first started making media appearances years ago, we were a deep blue state. And now I, I guess there are some Democrats around. I, I, I guess, you know, there's, there, um, there, there are, there's, there are now, um, super majorities in the, in the Republic, in the, in the legislature, um, who, Patrick's worked with many worked with many of those people for for years and helped uh, on many of their campaigns. So I think you're going to start off with a, a lot of very uh, friendly relationships um, and advancing uh, change and um, conservative principles. And you know, like Patrick said at his um, at his press conference the other day, you know, yes, he's he is a Republican. We all know him as a as a conservative, but he is a governor for all West Virginians, and so. Knowing him, he's also always willing to listen to perspectives that he doesn't uh, necessarily uh, agree with at first blush or that folks might not um, think he would agree with just because he's a very intelligent guy and very meticulous and very detail oriented and also someone um, who's if someone else has a better idea than he does, he's willing to change it change his perspective so yeah, he will be a governor for all West Virginia and all West Virginians. But I do think that um, a lot of the change that folks have been looking for here for years, we'll see with Patrick Morrissey. 
Yeah, I can confirm that, you know, working with the West Virginia First Foundation and talking about the opioid settlement, that a lot of the plaintiff's attorneys had very positive things to say about Patrick and his administration um, as attorney general in their efforts on that. And that's generally not a group that's aligned with Republicans. Well, I mean, that he's, he's going to listen and talk to everybody. And that's just part of being a very meticulous, detailed uh, person who he likes having all information on any topic before he takes a position or moves forward um, with anything. And that means uh, talking to folks who may not have voted for you. Um, or talking to folks who you don't agree with on anything else, but you might be able to find common ground on, you know, the particular topic of, of the day. So, yes, he will be a governor for all West Virginians, and he has made that very clear in all of his statements of, um, you know, there's no West Virginian who should feel any reason not to submit an idea to WVProsperityGroup.com. Conrad, the state, as you mentioned, uh, from the time you were Republican chair going forward, transitioning from a Democratic state to Republican uh, control, which was slight control at the time, and it was control that the Democrats thought was just temporary for two years. Uh, they were very wrong about that. <laughs> and now it's 32 to 2 in the Senate, 91 to 9 in the House. What is left to do to push through for Republican uh, administration in this state that's not already in motion? Well, we've elected a lot of uh, Republicans, and now um, now it's time to fully govern like Republicans. So that you know, elections are one part of the process. So uh, a multi-year process. So now it's time for a lot of the conservative reforms, um, and for there to be a lot of a, a lot of change uh, that folks have been wanting. Um, and it, it, it's going to, it will take a, a conservative Republican and aggressive governor like Patrick Morrissey um, to uh, put the pedal on the gas. So, you know, when I, and to get specific, you know, a lot of the things Patrick talks about are right-sizing government and looking at, you know, uh, how is state government organized now and is, is it organized in an efficient way that serves West Virginians uh, to the best of its ability and the ability that West Virginians deserve it to. And I think we can all say uh, that there's great room for improvement. So that is, that's going to be a philosophy that you'll see carried through. I mean, uh, are we going to be looking closely at the budget? Patrick talks about that all, all, all the time. He's talked about, uh, you know, state agencies um, needing to be, uh, review their finances and, and audit it and just see what is the, what are the best usages of taxpayer funds and frankly, if, um, if, 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 if they're not being used well, then maybe it's time that we look at programs or uh, things that might not need to exist uh, in the future or could exist on a, a tighter budget. And how can we return more taxpayer money to taxpayers? And on that because note, Conrad, I'll jump what, in. That's, yeah, that's who, that, that's who it belongs to. <laughs> we, are, we are out of time. I appreciate yours. It's been a pleasure interrupting your honeymoon your uh, child care, and if we're on long enough, maybe I can interrupt your senior citizen home at some point along the way, too. I hope so. Y'all call me any time. Next time I'm up there, I'm going to come and swing by. Please do. I think I said it last time. And yeah, Matt Harvey's fine, but remember, wvprosperitygroup.com. <laughs> wvprosperitygroup.com. Please log in with your ideas and your resumes. We want to hear them all. Thank you, Conrad.